Uh, Nick Mick from the Motley Crew, uh, one half of the band, and uh, we'll be chitting and chatting. And you know what? You guys can uh, phone us too. Uh, this yeah. is a toll free number. You don't have to pay this time. My God. 1 800 265 Much. 1 800 265 Much. This will be live on Monday if it's Tuesday. Forget about it, boys and girls. But anyway, uh, let's do Kickstart My Heart. Send me back. Back to chat with Motley Crew in a second. Hello there, boys and girls. Hey, and uh, welcome to Cable 10. I'm your host. Uh, Steve Anthony, and here we are at Cable 10 with a couple members of a major rock band. This over here would be... Nikki Six. Nikki Six, and this would be Mick Morris. They're from the rock band Molly Crew. I thought you forgot our names for a second. Welcome. How are you? Good. Is this going to be like How a long? real professional interview? How long have you been a rock band? <laughs> uh, uh, too good. long. Okay. Um, what's your favorite part about being a rock band? These aren't serious questions, no. are they? <laughs> okay. No, just, you know what I was doing? I was practicing this. I don't know how they do it. The, on the the real... We're talking about this on The Tonight Show. Yeah. Every, art, every, every person who appears on The Tonight Show has their legs crossed like this. And I it's can't called a life. squeeze play. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, their legs go numb or something else after that. Something goes numb. Gentlemen, uh, how... God, there's Gentlemen, there's somebody watching. Gentlemen, you ever have that problem when you walk up to a washroom and it says gentlemen and you wonder whether you should push open the door or not? Mm -mm. Never? <laughs> Dude, where are you hiding the glue? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're very casual about this whole thing. Yeah. Um, so you guys have split up into, into individual discussion groups, uh, I guess traveling around doing the promo thing for, for a decade of decadence. Mm -hmm. uh, where are the other guys? New, New York. Where's New York? New York, yeah. yeah. So we're up here in Canada. Yeah. Doing our stuff. This, this might sound cliche, but I, and I know what the answer is going to be. You, you guys like Canada, don't you? Honestly? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can you be more, like, you always expect those monosyllabic answers uh, coming from rock artists. I mean, we recorded our album up here. Yeah. Right, that doesn't mean that you like Canada. Just well, I mean, but, but kind of like this, we spent six months here. And we right. really got to know the people. And, uh -huh. and I know that East Coast and West Coast is real different. And we're in Toronto now. But mm -hmm. We recorded in Vancouver, but we've spent a lot of time up here. Yeah. And we've got a lot of uh, you know, a lot of fans and had a lot of good times up here. Yeah. The only place that I think, <laughs> never mind. There's just Lloyd Minster. It's a little too uh, desolate. <laughs> that's the only, <laughs> only place. We played, we played a, that's it. We played a place called uh, the Oil Patch in Lloyd Minster. Yeah. I swear oh, to man. God, we played. There was like uh, two people in there. That's yeah. when we first started. We did a little little tour up there. No, you know what, though? There might have been two people there, according to you. But right now, in Lloyd Minster, there are 900,000 people there who claim that they were at that That's show. That's right. You know what I mean? No kidding. Everybody in town says, oh, I was at that yeah, first show. Yeah, but then they were throwing bottles at the whole city. <laughs> but there are 90,000 who claim they were there. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. You know it. Uh, so you're not, you're not doing a tour, which makes some sense. This is a retrospective of, uh, of Motley Crue. And here's another cliche, um, a cliche for you. Um, Motley Crue back in 82, 81, sorry, and now 91. Uh, short synopsis, 25 words or less, that kind of thing. Just how is, how is Motley Crue different from then to now? We're it's older. It's SA time. We're older. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> oh, God. You know, a lot of bands say, oh, they're the same, you know. We're the same wild, crazy guys and all single and solo and thousand chicks a night and all that. You know, we've always been a real honest band. We've gone through a lot of changes. We've had drug problems. We've, you know, we're, we're all married at this point, you mm -hmm. know. Um, music's the most important thing. It's not image. It's, um, you know, so we've gone through a lot of changes. I say we've grown up as, as uh, you know, players. I mean, our musicianship is 100% better, mm -hmm. not a doubt. Um, That's the main thing. Yeah. You know what? This boy actually does do some research sometimes. Okay, here we go. And can I say publicly, without sucking up too much, I'm, a, I'm an absolute huge fan of you guys, and I have been for Cool, last. man. Thank you. Um, and straight, vice versa. Straight, straight, yeah, Even right. though only Mick Mars gets much yeah. music in Los Angeles. He does. In fact, yes. satellite dish. Yeah, I got to get one. Um, how, how do I how do I put this the right way? Um, what's your favorite color? <laughs> Dumb me. No, I, I didn't mean that that way. Clear. Uh, pardon? Clear is still my favorite color. Clear is still your favorite color? Yeah. You know, just, just take us back here for a second. I remember when the band first got together and we do these dumb teeny bopper magazines, you know, that the record company has you do, and they'd say, what's your favorite color? And we'd be like, favorite color? What's that have to do with the music? And Mick goes, clear. And everybody in the band went, 
This guy's a genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. yeah. It's like no one's ever answered that way before. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, you know what? Like I was telling you guys off the air, uh, we've joined the uh, 1980s, and we have actually some phone lines that people can call right. on. So this is like that interactive television, which um, Tom Snyder did this originally, didn't he? Um, <laughs> so we have a caller. I'd love to see caller Scott. Where's Scott phoning in from? Moncton. Scott's phoning in from Moncton. So would you Moncton. guys? Um, What's Moncton? We'll talk to Scott. Obviously the fan. Scott, yeah, how go. are you? Here they are. Not bad. How are you guys? Hey, dude. How's it going? Good. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, why did you guys uh, happen to do uh, Eric and UK on this album? It's such a great song. I was just wondering what inspired you to do it. Uh, well, some of us in the band, uh, more myself and uh, Vince and Tommy, have been Sex Pistols fans. Mick came from a different background musically, more blues oriented. <laughs> And it was real. It was real interesting getting Mick to play a punk song. I always get picked on. <laughs> Point to blame. But I thought it was a great way to end the decade. Yes, I think so too. It's a great album. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay. You're talking about um, actually, like I was saying, it's, the boy actually does some research sometimes. Um, there was a time set, and I and I know uh, the Def Leppard folks said it too when when Rick had his terrible accident. Uh, they had said, in, in the stuff I researched on you guys, it was like, this is the band. If, if any member would leave, mm -hmm. the band would no longer continue. I don't know right. if you guys feel that way. I think that, I think that information I read about yeah. five mm -hmm. years ago or something like that. Is that do you guys still feel that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, there's a certain chemistry amongst the band that if we had a different band member, it would be a different band. And to go on as Motley Crue with a different member wouldn't really be Motley Crue. I mean, we've never been faced with that problem. If, if somebody was to die or something, you know, someone wanted Tragic. to leave the band, I don't know, we've always said we'd break up the band. It, it would really take someone special to fill that person's shoes and probably have to change the name of the band. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Sure. Um, obviously popular in Canada and uh, North, and um, sorry, in the United States of America. And then there's the traditional, oh, they're great in Japan. And, and people who read trade magazines here, they, they have no idea what's going on in Japan. I mean, if, uh, I mean I've never been to Japan to see what the music scene is there and how bands are, are treated and, and yeah. what kind of reaction there is. And, and I mean, you hear about it. Is it sometimes like this is Spinal Tap going over <laughs> to do a Japanese tour? It's like, it's like, they just love us, but they don't know anything about us <laughs> or something like that. It's very strange over there. There isn't a music scene over there. There's a uh, sort of like fans over there are what the word fanatic came, uh, fans came from fanatic, right? Right. They're very fanatical about, about you. They they know everything about you. They sort of worship you. And a band like us, it makes us feel real odd. Uh -huh. You know, they're like so into every little aspect of us. Yeah. And uh, they know things about you that, that you, you don't. They know. don't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> right. Going into the phone thing again. Uh, we're traveling. This is great. This is this is like this is cool. This is almost global. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Montreal. Here's, Nuclear, here's, dude. Here's Debbie. Davy, go ahead. Uh, hi, how's it going? Hi. Right. Fine, thanks. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to know, I'm uh, here with my singer, we got a band uh, in Montreal. I wanted to know, we were just finished recording our demo. What do you think is the best way to uh, get attention to your demos from the uh, record company? Play naked. <laughs> <laughs> On a demo? How are they going to know? <laughs> uh, I well, that sounded it. like a good thing to say, <laughs> you know? It sounded right to me. <laughs> oh, God. You know what we did was we just got out there in the trenches and just played and played live. Uh, there's so many tapes. We get tons of tapes all the time at our management office and we've just uh, started Motley Records for us producing artists and stuff. And it's hard, you know, you get, you know, 100, 200 tapes and to listen to them all, they all start to sound the same. So anything you can do that makes it different, whether it's some way of packaging it or, uh, you know, for instance, there's a guy in Los Angeles that I know. He I forget the name of the band, but he was telling me what he did with his demo tape. Is he put it in a diaper? They were put it in a diaper, right? Cool. Really sick. Okay, I'm not suggesting this, but sure you are. <laughs> you are too. Can you imagine well, some A and R guy gets this diaper and he opens it and he he listened to the tape, whether it was good or you know, yeah. Whether it was and sorry, then, sorry, and then, 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 then Debbie, what were you saying? Sorry. I was just wondering if the diaper was like previously used. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this uh, this I don't know. But we could call the A and R man and find out. I don't suggest that, by the way. Yeah. And then there's Ozzy with the dubs. Yeah. So, but yeah. good luck. You know, I, I know how hard it is. Believe me, and we wish you all the luck. The reason I'm looking down is because the speakers down there. <laughs> I know they're going. What you, you wish you could see a, a shot of Debbie. Debbie, you're beautiful. You're short. Yeah, you're right down there. 
<laughs> you look industrial, baby. Dev, here. you look industrial, babe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know what? We're going to do that video thing, shall we? Yep. What are we going to play, guys? Without you, uh, we'll be back talking with uh, Nikki and Mick here on uh, Much Music in Just a Sex. Stay here. Without me. <laughs> You're here. <laughs>